Hello, my name is Thomas Woolley and I'm a mathematician. I'm here in the Ashmolean Museum to show you some of their diverse range of objects. In particular, I'm going to focus on some of the very early mathematical tablets which illustrate the importance of nothing, or zero as we now call it. Let me take you back 4,000 years to the south of Iraq, which was then known as Babylonia. We know a great deal about the Babylonians because their language survives as writing on clay tablets. Their writing, known as cuneiform, involved making wedge-shaped marks on clay tablets. The Babylonians had a thriving society because they developed mathematical systems which could keep track of financial transactions. In fact, mathematics was so important to the Babylonians that it's estimated that 95% of all tablets use numbers in some way. The Babylonians could do arithmetic, solve equations, predict astronomical positions, and were using Pythagoras' theorem hundreds of years before Pythagoras was even born. However, we all make mistakes, and this video will illustrate the mistakes are very easy to make when you lack the concept of nothing. Of course, like us, they had calculators or lookup tables. For example, this hexagonal prism has numerous values marked in it for a variety of calculations. In particular, it has the square numbers 1 to 60 noted down this central column. The prism would sit on a pole, and the mathematician would rotate it and look for the value they wanted and note it down. Now you may have noticed that all of the Babylonian numbers were made from two wedge shapes, because what they used was a stylus and a piece of clay, and then downward strokes would be ones, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then they would turn their stylus to the side, and that would be ten. So altogether, that's nineteen. Very simple, you might think. But the sting in the tail is the Babylonians use base 60 in their number system rather than base 10 that we use. But what does this mean? For example, if I wrote the number 135, I would know that it means 1 times 100 plus 3 times 10 plus 5 times 1. But to a Babylonian, this would mean 1 times 60 plus 3 times 10 plus 5 times 1 which would equal 95. Now this would seem weird to us nowadays, but we actually still use the sexagesimal system as it's now called. Because instead of writing 135, what if I wrote 1 hour and 35 minutes? You would immediately know that that was equal to 95 minutes. So if it helps, think about all the numbers being written in terms of hours, minutes and seconds. Now, the tablet I really want to look at is this one. We think it was uh, inscribed by a mathematician in around 1900 to 1600 BC. And it seems they were doing a fairly simple geometric problem of calculating the area of a right angle triangle. Now, unfortunately, their answer has been lost to the mists of time. But maybe we can reconstruct their solution by following their footsteps. Let's take a closer look. Now, here comes the science bit. But don't worry, we'll take it slow. And even if you don't follow everything, Hopefully by the end, you'll be able to see that zero is a very important number indeed. Let's transcribe what we can see on the clay. First, there is of course a sketch of what we're trying to do. Now, although the triangle may not look like it, we believe that this was a right angle triangle, so let's start there. Next, we have the height and the width, written in cuneiform, of course. These symbols can then be converted into their numerical counterparts. For example, the width is three units, four tens, and five units, or 345 whereas the height is 1, 52, 30. Now, don't forget these numbers are in base 60. To convert them into base 10, we can think about them in terms of time. For example, how many seconds are in 3 minutes 45 seconds? Well, it turns out there are 225 seconds. So in base 10, the width of the triangle is 225 units. Similarly, it turns out there are 6,750 seconds in 1 hour, 52 minutes and 30 seconds. Finally, we write down as much of the area calculation that we can see. Specifically, we can see that there is a 3-unit group, an 8-unit group, and it finishes with a 5-unit group. However, we don't know 3 of the internal digits. We can calculate the area of the triangle using the simple fact that the area is height times width divided by 2. But this does not match the answer on the clay. So what went wrong? In order to calculate the area, we would expect that our Babylonian mathematician would have used long-form multiplication. I'm not going to go through all the gory details here, but if you're interested, please click the link below to illustrate the full calculation. Now, within the calculation, a key step is the production of the number 34500. If you produce this correctly, then you should have no problems producing the correct answer for the area. 
Our problem arises because we don't have a zero, thus the cuneiform representation of this number is 3 units, 4 tenths and 5 units. But this cuneiform representation could be 345, 34500 or 30450, as well as many other possible interpretations. So if instead of taking the correct answer, we take 30450, then we generate an incorrect value for the area. So what, you might think? But the critical point is that this new incorrect area matches the numbers that we can see on the clay. Converting our newly formed number back into cuneiform, we can reproduce the incorrect answer that was given nearly 4,000 years ago. So you may think that zero isn't important. Indeed, by its definition, it symbolises nothing. But having nothing has allowed us to correct this calculation, gain an insight into Babylonian mathematics, and has allowed us to be able to tell the difference between 1 and 60. Mathematics isn't easy, and everyone makes mistakes. I know I do all the time. But the next time you do do a hard problem, and unfortunately you do make a mistake, pray and hope that it's not big enough that it ends up in a museum.